This morning we continue on our, our series on Daniel. We've been going through the book of Daniel. I trust that you've been enjoying it. That, you know, what the Lord has to say to us through an ancient book, but yet He has so much to say to us today. You know, and, and last week we looked at how uh, the Lord, you know, uh, <clears throat> gives us because He has a plan for Israel. And when He revealed it to, to Daniel, then we realized that the Lord has a plan for Israel. There is hope for the future, right? There's hope for the future because, you know, hundreds of years ahead, the Lord said, no, I'm going to do this not just in the 70 years at the end, end of the exile in Babylon, but I'm going to do it for you. Hundreds of years ahead when the anointed one will come, when Jesus will come and solve the whole problem of sin once and for all. Amen? That's good news, isn't it? Amen? So, now, uh, so today, we want to look at yeah, I said, yeah, pastor, that's for, for, for the future. But what about today? But today I want to say to you that, you know, even from Daniel 10, you can learn something to talk about, that we can learn something that can assure us, that can uh, do us so much good by saying that the Lord, His presence is here for us for the present, for today, not, for the, not just for the future. His presence is here for us today. Amen? Hallelujah. We live in very difficult times today. We... We know, I'm sure most of you know today, about all that is happening in Europe. The, the, the war, or the invasion, or the military operation, whatever terms you want to take, you know, that's happening in Europe. You some, and we sometimes think that, yeah, something like that so far away doesn't really affect us. But it does. Because what happened there will affect us somehow. And, but before I go on, I just want to introduce somebody here with us. Very special, okay. Uh, uh, can I ask Ivy and her son Melvick to stand? Yeah? Okay. Uh, they have come all the way from Sramban. Yeah? Uh, I will explain to you in a little while. Okay? Thank you. Yeah, we will pray for you in a little while. You know, so, you see, in 2014, when this conflict in Ukraine first started, MH17 flew over Ukraine, or part of it, I don't know where, uh, on the northern side of it. And then a missile went and hit the, you know, hit, hit the plane. And the co-pilot was Ivy's husband and Melvick's. The captain was, was Ivy's husband and, and, and Melvick's father. We was, you know, it so happened I'm going to talk about Ukraine today. But, but we thank the Lord that over the years, the Lord has been good to them. As a family, the Lord has... We, that's eight years ago, you see Melvin now coming up and he wants, Melvin, he wants to become a pilot like his father. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, and so, so because of conflicts in the world, because of conflicts in the world, we are all affected one way or the other. Okay? Sometimes in, in, in ways that we don't foresee, in ways we don't think about. And in, in this conflict that's happening in Europe, um, so all the actions, you know, military action, and then the economic sanctions on Russia and so on, will affect all of us. Oil prices have gone to record highs. We have been in Malaysia, we have been shielded because the government gives a subsidy for our RON 95. It kept it at 205. But it won't last forever at that. Okay? Uh, they, in fact, they are talking about if we continue to keep the, the, the petrol price RON, two, uh, RON 95 at 2.05, dollars, uh, ring it, uh, it, it will not last, yeah, because uh, that will mean a subsidy of 20-something billion ringgit a year for the, for the country, so they cannot afford it, okay, so it's going to affect us in different ways, and, and you know, Ukraine and Russia are some of the biggest producers of wheat, uh, sunflower oil, and everything like that, so food prices will go up. And also, if there are sanctions carry on like this, uh, shipping will be affected. And so fertilizers, Russia is also one of the biggest fertilizer producers. I go to Russia quite often in the past, Russia, Ukraine in the past. And so, you know, it's going to be affected. And then fertilizer prices going up, that means food prices will go up. Or people cannot afford to put fertilizers, then uh, less crop food prices will also go up. So it will affect us all. And then if you think about it, what... What then for the present? How then will the Lord be real to us? Amen? So, as we, as we think about this, uh, that His presence for the present for us. 
how can the Lord be real for us today? We want to look at the book of Daniel, okay? Uh, but before that, just a very quick summary in case some of you are a little bit lost where I am now. We have been going through the book of Daniel and we look at uh, some of the dreams and visions of the kings. We also look at some of the dreams and visions of Daniel. Some of the visions of the kings are this, you know, the king, king Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar uh, dreamt of this big statue, you know, and uh, of gold, head of gold, silver, and bronze, and all that. But in the end, a rock from heaven came and knocked it all down. Then Nebuchadnezzar thought, dreamt of a tree. There was going to be a big tree where all the birds and everything else gathered. But then the, the, the instruction came down from heaven, cut down the tree, and Nebuchadnezzar was reduced to be an animal. Huh? And then, of course, uh, Daniel 5, his grandson, celebrating with all the gold, gold goblets from the, from the temple of Israel, uh, the Lord in Israel, so which they captured. And then there, was, there came a writing on the wall saying, your time is up. Your time is up. Amen? You remember all this? So the first part of it is all about uh, dreams and vision of kings. Okay, And then we also look at the dreams and vision of Daniel. And, and, and this, the four great beasts, the ram and the goat, I won't go into all the details. And last week, we looked at the 77s, how there was a plan for Israel in 490 years' time, you know, from the time that Daniel got there, from the time that the order went out to rebuild Jerusalem. Okay. Okay. And then today, we are going to look at Daniel chapter 10. But actually, Daniel chapter 10, 11, 12 are all one vision. You, you following me so far? Are all one vision, and we will look at it the next two weeks again. So, but basically what I want to say is, in Daniel chapter 1 to 6, which, we said, which I said last week, was that it is in Aramaic. And because it refers, you know, all, this, all those are, are for, the, for the Gentiles. But in Daniel 7 to 12, it's in Hebrew. There, there's, there are actually prophecies for the people of Israel. Okay? So, basically... The, the, those uh, three visions on, on, on that side are for world empires, how they will, how they will rise and fall. And on this side, it's all about Israel in relation to the world empires. You're following me so far? Okay, so there's a rough summary very quickly. But let's look at Daniel chapter 10. In the third year of Cyrus king, let's read together, can we? Huh? In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a revelation was given to Daniel, who was called Belteshazzar. Its message was true, and it concerned a great war. The understanding of the message came to him in a vision. So it concerned a great war. Uh, we are now witnessing a war. You say, uh, Pastor, it's only a small war between Russia and Ukraine. You don't know. All they need is some mad fellow somewhere, not say mad, some fellow, whatever, agit uh, instigator, agitator, whatever, press the wrong button, and then there's a nuclear war. It, you say it cannot happen. India just sent a missile to Pakistan, accidentally, they say. You know? <laughs> so a big problem. Not just, then Ukraine had a drone that flew all the way to Croatia, Zagreb, and crashed there. You think it cannot happen? It can happen, right? Uh, so we don't know what we, 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 I'm so glad the Bible talks about things like this that can prepare our hearts to know what is happening around us. Amen? Hallelujah. Okay? So the understanding of the message came to him in a vision. So in this one verse, summarizes up what, we, what, what we're going to talk about in Daniel chapter 10, 11, and 12. Okay? So, there was a vision uh, that was given to Daniel and it concerned a great war. And then the other thing I want you to notice is that in the third year of Cyrus, third year of Cyrus, remember Cyrus? If you've been reading your Bibles through Ezra, you remember, in the first year of Cyrus, he gave uh, it did a proclamation out that all the Jews who want to go back to Jerusalem to rebuild the temple can go. Amen. So, it, what this vision that um, Daniel got came two years after this. Okay, so far? Okay, if you cannot remember this, never mind, but I thought some of you may want to know. Okay? And so, let's read again. And at that time, 
I, Daniel, mourn for three weeks. I ate no choice food, no meat or wine touched my lips, and I used no lotions at all until the three weeks were over. Daniel mourned for three weeks. Why did he mourn? We are not told. But there was something heavy in his heart. Maybe he was thinking about the people who had just gone back to Jerusalem and wondering what happened to them. And maybe he was thinking, get, getting, you know, the Lord is doing such a great thing, allowing the king of Persia, the biggest empire at that time, to allow the Jews to go back to rebuild the temple. And only 40-something thousand of them went back out of the big number that was uh, still in Babylon. Uh, so only a small 2% of the Jews went back to rebuild. So maybe it was something heavy in his heart. You know what I mean? So he mourned. He, 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 he didn't fast, but he says he didn't want to eat any choice food or the nice food. He, he just got to go, go for a plain diet. No wine touched his lips. You know? And he had no lotions or, until the three weeks uh, were over. So he didn't put any, any makeup, any fragrance or whatever it is. He, he just wanted to spend time just, just say, Lord, what is happening? And carrying that heavy burden on his heart. Some of us are carrying heavy burdens and the Lord knows about it. So, so, eh, what happened? Huh? Okay, never mind. So, the, if you remember the, the feast, huh? the, first, the feast also begins on the first month. I think there's something missing. Okay. But then Daniel, because he abstained from, the, from meat, from choice food and meat for 21 days, which means that during that time, he didn't even celebrate the Passover. Uh, because the Passover, you need to. We, 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 we celebrated the Passover our way. We took, we took bread and, 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 and uh, wine. But there, during the first Passover, they had, to have, they had to slaughter a lamb. He didn't take any meat. Uh, so he, he didn't even celebrate the Passover. Okay, so okay, it came back. Okay, on the first 24th day of the first month, as I was standing on the bank of the ri great river Tig the Tigris, so he was standing there, and then this 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 uh, this vision came to him. Okay, what happened? Verse five says, "I looked up, and there before me was a man dressed in linen." with a belt of fine gold from Upas around his waist. His body was like topaz, his face like lightning, his eyes were like flaming torches, his arms and legs like the gleam of burnished bronze, and his voice like the sound of a multitude. So, he said, this, this, is, this, this was a man, but he looked very different. He had a long, long linen gown. His body was like topaz. You know what is topaz? Topaz is a, a very, one of the gems. Huh? Uh, some of the ladies nodding, the men don't know anything. Okay? But it is actually one of the hardest gems around. Next to diamond and one or two others. But it's one of the harder, harder gems around. So he had a really solid body. And his face was like lightning, bright and shining. His eyes were like flaming torches, his arms and like with, with burnished bronze. I did not show you my arms, okay? Not like burnished bronze. Okay? But, but his arms and, 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 and legs were like burnished bronze. And his voice like the sound of a multitude, a loud voice. When you read something like this, can you remember where else you read something like this? Where else were they read it? You remember John? John the Apostle when he was at the at the island of Patmos, the Lord revealed himself to him. So in Daniel, we read this. Huh? And then in Revelation chapter 1, we read about how John also saw a similar figure. Now, let's read it. John, uh, Revelation 1, verse 13. And among the lampstands was someone like a son of man, dressed in a robe, reaching down to his feet, and with a golden sash around his chest. The hair on his head was white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were, were like blazing fire, his feet like bronze glowing in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of rushing waters. You see the similarity there? You know, so when you, look, when you put it together, the common description of men that they had a long linen robe and there was a golden chest, a belt around him, and then the eyes were flames of fire, and the legs 
and feet and legs and arms are like glowing bronze. Okay? And the face like lightning. This one only for in only Daniel saw. Huh? And his uh, and the other side, hair the white was what Daniel uh, what John saw. Okay? And the voice, but the voice like a sound of multitudes, a, a voice of mighty waters. When you look at it, this, then you say, but the scripture tells us very clearly that Jesus was with John. John saw Jesus. And therefore, and therefore, Daniel, when Daniel was, as it was at his lowest point, when he was mourning for three weeks for his people or whatever that was weighing down on him, the Lord was present for him. Okay? And this is what we call Christophany. Christophany is simply this, the pre-incarnate appearance of Jesus. Say, Pastor, got such thing? Of course. Remember when we, we, we did, even in the book of uh, Daniel, uh, when, when his three friends were thrown into the, into the furnace, and then they saw a fourth man there. Amen? They saw a fourth man there who prevented them from being burnt up in the fire. In fact, it, the, the protection was so good that when later on, when even the, the soldiers were all just at the side already, already burn up before they reach the bottom. Okay? So, Christophany. So, what we are witnessing here is a Christophany that's happening. Uh, uh, if God is appearing before His time, then we call it a Theophany. So, before Jesus was born, there are different times when Jesus appeared to different people. Remember when Joshua, when Joshua was going to lead the people into the promised land, just at the, at the bank of River Jordan, then a commander-in-chief, a, a man dressed like a commander-in-chief appeared before him. And that is Jesus Christ appearing before him to tell him to be strong and of good courage. Amen? Hallelujah. So, Revelation 1, John encountered the risen and ascended Jesus. In Daniel 10, Daniel encountered the pre-incarnate Jesus. But Jesus was present. The point I want to make is Jesus was present for Daniel in his sorrows. In, 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 at a time when he had no, don't know what to do and he was just mourning and just wondering what is going to happen. Yeah, Lord, you have shown me all those. But now my people are not responding. Now I cannot do anything. Remember, uh, Daniel by this time would have been nearly 90 years old. He, couldn't, he, he wouldn't be able to do anything about it too. He, he probably couldn't travel all the way to Jerusalem to, to do anything. But Jesus, Jesus came to him. Amen? Now, are, are you in some, are you, are, are you caught, caught in some uh, sorrow of your carrying a heavy burden on your, on, on your back? Are you, are you currently, you know, getting involved in something that you don't know what to do about? You don't know about our career. You don't know what to do about your business. You don't know what to do about your relationship. I want to say to you this morning that Jesus is there for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus is there for us. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus will be present for us just as He was present for, for Daniel. Amen. Hallelujah. But let's quickly go on. Uh, Daniel was the only one who saw the vision. Those who were with me did not see it. But such terror overwhelmed them that they fled and hid themselves. You know, this didn't happen just like this. When, when Paul was writing, uh, was, when Paul was going to Damascus to persecute the Christians there, from Jerusalem to the Christians there, Jesus appeared and, and, and all, his, all the people didn't see Jesus. Only Paul saw. Saul at that time. Huh? Saul, later known as Paul Saul. The others didn't see. They only heard. The same way here, they didn't see, but they all were so frightened, they all ran away. Amen? And so I was left alone, gazing at this great vision. I had no strength left. My face turned deadly pale, and I was helpless. So he was there. And sometimes God wants to meet us alone. Amen? He wants to meet us alone. He wants to talk to us alone. And, and in our sorrows, in our, in, in our difficulties, he wants to talk to us alone. But he had no strength left because it was such a glorious vision. When you, when you see Jesus in all his glory, it's such a glorious vision. It takes, draws everything out of you. 
So sometimes people say, oh, pastor, I, 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 I think I saw Jesus. I say, what do you do? Oh, like that, like that. Uh, I say, maybe not. You've got to think carefully again. <laughs> when if you really see the recent Jesus, if you see Jesus in all his glory, you will, you, whatever strength that is in you, whatever, you will be all just drawn out. Amen? Because it's so glorious for us. Then I heard him speaking. And as I listened to him, I fell into a deep sleep, my face to the ground. Now, don't sleep on me too this morning, okay? Uh, just because I heard pastor speaking now, I, I fell asleep, okay? No, no, no. <laughs> you know, not, not like that, okay? But my point is this, that sometimes, you know, when, when the Lord speaks to us, He puts us in a deep sleep. When the Lord wanted to cut the covenant with Abraham, He put him into a deep sleep. Why? So that he don't get distracted by anything around you. Amen? You know, I tell you a secret again, huh? One of the things that we do at night with my wife is that we will, before we sleep, we just put on a sermon, you know? Uh, and then, 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 then we put on the sermon. Then my wife, then my wife always say, you spend more time choosing the sermon than you listen to the sermon. You say, I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten, you already sleep already. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, but I say, you forget, you know, when the Lord wants to speak to me, He speaks to me in my subconscious. I don't have to consciously listen. <laughs> but don't do it to me today. <laughs> uh, so, so, whatever it is, I may not remember it now, but one day you come back to me in my subconscious. Okay. Hallelujah. But anyway, that's what happened to Daniel. He, he, he was listening to the Lord speaking to him, and then he fell into a deep sleep. And then after that, to, the way I read it, the Lord left and then sent an angel, okay? And I'll tell you why in a while, okay? So in verse 10, a hand touched me. He didn't say that the, the man, in the, in, 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 the, in the dazzling man, the man in all his glory touched me. He said, a hand touched me and set me trembling on my knees, my hands and knees. And he said, Daniel, you are highly esteemed, carefully Consider carefully the words I'm about to speak to you and stand up for I've been sent to you. And when he said this to me, I stood up. You know, the Lord sent this angel. I will tell you why I say he's an angel. Uh, Daniel, he said, you know, the Lord knows all your names. The Lord knows that. Today, he's, he's just calling to different ones of you now. You know, he said, angel. He says, you know, he says, uh, Daniel, you know, there's some Daniels here. I'm Daniel, uh, Jasmine. Yeah? And the Lord is saying, the Lord knows. And the Lord is saying to you, you are highly esteemed. You know what the word highly esteemed means? You know, he looked you very up, uh, highly esteemed. But actually, the, the, the original Hebrew says, you are greatly loved. Amen. And he's saying to all of us here today, he says to us, you know, Melvick, you are greatly loved. You know, he's saying to, you know, Shufan, you are greatly loved. He's saying to different ones of us like this, you are greatly loved. And consider carefully the words I'm about to speak to you. Amen. You know, Daniel has to be so special for the Lord to greatly love him. But you know, today, all of us in the new covenant, because of Jesus, we are greatly loved by the Lord. Amen. He paid the price for you. He paid the, his life for you. He shed his blood for you. You might be so precious to him. Amen. Hallelujah. So, let me tell you why I think it's an angel. Okay. Uh, in Daniel chapter 9, we look at last week, um, Gabriel came and told the same words to Daniel and said, you are highly esteemed. And then, Daniel also in chapter, uh, Gabriel also in chapter 9 said the same thing. Uh, said, consider the word and understand the vision. And then he said, I come to give you insight and understanding. That's Daniel 9. But when you look at Daniel 10, what did he say again? You are highly esteemed again. Huh? Yeah, we, we saw that you are highly esteemed. Then he said, consider carefully the words. Consider carefully the words. I've come to explain to you what will happen to your people in the future. So basically, the similar words are being used, and then in a sense, uh, this I, I, is, is the angel sent by my Lord. Maybe the, we're not sure, but maybe it was also Gabriel uh, uh, that spoke this to Daniel in chapter 10. Amen? Okay, let's move on. Then he said, 
The angel continues, said, Do not be afraid, Daniel. Since the first day you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before your Lord, your words were heard and have come in response to them. Okay, so before, just quickly, just add this on. Since the first day, so every time we pray, the Lord hears. Okay, the very first day. Sometimes He doesn't answer you directly. Uh, in this case, there was a reason. In our case, I explained to you why sometimes it's, it's different. Okay? But he goes on to say something very, very interesting, very astounding. And the prince of the Persian kingdom resisted me 21 days. Then Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me because I was detained there with the king of Persia. So he's saying, what, prince of, prince of uh, Persia kingdom, Michael, the chief prince, what is all this about? Uh, so he said, and now I have come to explain to you what will happen to your people in the future for the vision concerns a time yet to come. So he said, I was stopped, delayed for a while in the answer to your prayer, but now I come to, to, to explain to you what will happen to your people in future. And this concerns something right in the future, okay? So this prophecy, the prophecy in chapter 10 and chapter 11 is about Israel, right? It's about Israel, and yet at the same time, there's something that we can learn from. But so behind the scenes, so what? But what the angel had given to us now to understand behind the scenes, there was this angel Gabriel. He says he was detained for 21 days by who? By a prince of Persia, by by one of those fallen angels, by one of those uh, cohorts of, um, of of Satan, one of those martyr of Satan, right? Uh, uh, so he was re uh, fighting that. Why? Because he didn't want he didn't want Gabriel to continue to influence the king of Persia, and he's so resisting it. And then later he didn't want Daniel, uh, uh, the angel, to go and tell Daniel what is going to happen. So he was resisting Daniel. But then we are told Michael came to assist, and therefore now then Daniel now uh, the. the Angel now can go to tell Daniel the vision. Okay, I know it's a little bit of what, huh? but we are given a scene of what is happening. Sometimes we think what is happening around is what we see. But the scripture tells us there's something else happening. And, and actually what we see physically uh, only parallels what is happening in the spiritual realm. Amen? Okay? So while he was saying this to me, I bow with my face toward the ground and was speechless. And the one who looked like a man touched my lips and I opened my mouth and began to, to speak. I said to the one standing before me, I'm overcome with anguish because of the vision, my Lord, and I feel very weak. How can I, your servant, talk with you, my Lord? My strength is gone and I can hardly breathe. You know, sometimes, sometimes we can be so drained emotionally sometimes it's not it's not just physical weakness huh? it's because mentally emotionally we are so drained he said i no more strength I, I cannot talk anymore what is going to happen but the good thing is that when we say like this the lord you know he said i cannot speak the lord touches me he speak then now he said my strength is gone then what happened then the one who looked like a man touched me and gave me strength so i want to say to some of us here this uh, today some of us may be whether you're at home now or whether you are here in, in our service now, right? You may be overwhelmed uh, uh, and, and, and you may be overwhelmed with all your problems, all the different obstacles that you're facing. And maybe you, you, you feel emotionally so weak. There's no more will to go on. There's no more determination, no more willpower. And, 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 and the Lord says, He will give you strength. Amen. He will give you strength. Amen. Hallelujah. And he says, do not be afraid. You who are highly esteemed, peace, be strong now, be strong. In a time like this, we need to hear the word of the Lord for us today. Amen? Do not be afraid. Are you afraid of what is happening around you? Are you afraid of the future? The Lord says to you, do not be afraid. He says, you are highly esteemed. You are greatly loved. Say to somebody beside you, you are greatly loved by the Lord. Amen. 
Jesus loves you so very much. Hallelujah. You are greatly loved. You, know, you are highly esteemed. Then peace. He's, he speaks peace. In the middle of the storm, to, it's not about, you know, we, we read about how Jesus spoke to the storm and the storm ceased. Right? But you know, what the Lord wants, when the Lord said peace here, He's not worried. He, 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 he's telling you, don't worry about the storm outside. Let my peace rule in your heart. Amen? Let my peace rule in your heart. The storm can be outside, but if you have my peace my, in your heart, then it doesn't matter whether it's stormy outside or it's calm outside. Amen? Hallelujah. And then he said, be strong now. Be strong now. Don't say tomorrow I'll like, be stronger. No. Be strong now. Be strong. He said the same thing. The Lord said the same thing to Joshua. He said, be strong and of good courage. Be strong and of good courage. Be strong and of good courage. You know, and He will strengthen you. Amen? Hallelujah. But let's quickly uh, come to a close. So, do not be afraid. You are highly esteemed. Peace. Be strong now. Be strong. Amen? And so when he spoke to me, when the angel spoke to Daniel, he said, I was strengthened and said, Speak, my Lord, since you have given me strength. Now, now I'm ready, Lord, to receive what you have to say to me. Uh, he's telling the angel, Speak, you know, so that I know, so that uh, I'm ready now. You have given me strength. And so the angel said, So do you not know why I come to you? Soon I'll return to fight against the prince of Persia. And when I go, the prince of Greece. Next week, we'll look, look at this again. Huh? But first, I will tell you what is written in the book of truth. No one supports me against them except Michael, your prince. Okay? So this is, this one, I can tatang next week. Okay? <laughs> okay, this part we'll talk about next week. But, but very quickly, so behind the scenes, what is happening? He's saying, Gabriel, Gabriel is there. He said, I got to fight with the prince of Persia. I got to fight with the prince of Greece. And then Michael will come and help me and we will, we will support them out. Okay? Okay, that's basically that. Uh, but you see, then you say, Pastor, oh, oh, you mean there's a spiritual war going on now? Then how? How do I know uh, when, whether we, we will get the answer to my prayer? What is happening now? You know, you know this, today, today is different. Huh? In, in Daniel's time, Jesus has not come. Jesus was not born. Jesus has not died for us on the cross. Jesus has not defeated the enemy. But today, Jesus has all authority over the spiritual powers when he demonstrated his victory over Satan on the cross by his resurrection. Amen. He has defeated Satan, Kao Kao. He has defeated death, Kao Kao. He has defeated sin, Kao Kao. And so he is in full control of everything. Amen. And today, if we pray, and if there is a delay in the answer of the Lord to our prayers, it's not because our guardian angel is held up by some little minion uh, devil no 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 it's not that it's just because the lord thinks that it's not the time for us to hear it yet okay it's not the time for him to answer our prayer sometimes we ask for funny things or sometimes when the answer is there we don't see because we see only with our physical eyes okay but the lord is in full control amen he has defeated them so there is no need for us to be afraid in fact that's what jesus said to us, he said, in this world you will have trouble. Sounds familiar, huh? In this world, who don't have trouble? We have trouble, right? We have trouble. And sometimes deep trouble. Sometimes very difficult trouble. You know, like, like uh, Stephen's niece and, uh, and, and grandnephew, uh, Ivy and Melvin. They, they, I mean, to lose a husband, to lose a father like that, they were deep trouble. But he said, take heart. Take heart. I have overcome the world. Hallelujah! He said, I have overcome the world. Amen? So, whatever we see around us, he says, I have overcome all these, all these things happening. You know, according to, you know, don't be overwhelmed by it all. Why? Because surely, I'm with you always to the very end of the age. He's here with us now. He's here with us always. 
even to the end of the age. Even though whatever wars may happen, even though whatever disruption there may be to our lives, even though you know, the economic uh, Conditions may, be, may become even worse than now. We have gone through two very bad years. And now we're starting the new year, you know, in, in, in a not, not better condition, it's going to be worse than, than the last two years. But we know that He's with us always. Amen. And when He's with us, all things will work out well for us. Amen. Do you believe that? Would you accept that? Would you take hold of that? Amen. In this world, you will have trouble. But take heart, I've overcome the world. And surely, I'm with you always to the very end of the age. Let's all rise. speaking sometimes ahead of time because we have not experienced some of these difficulties yet. But I believe that this is a message the Lord has given for us as a church that as we are aware of the difficulties ahead, of the obstacles and of the problems ahead of us, we can look back and know that last month, one week ago, ten days ago, no, six months ago, pastor, my pastor spoke about this and say in this world there will be many problems there are many troubles but take note take heart that Jesus has overcome the world and that he is with us always even to the end of the age Father we thank you Lord that you are always there for us you were there Lord for Daniel at the depth of his of his sorrows you were there for him when he was overwhelmed with whatever burdens that was upon his heart. And I know, Lord, that you are with each one of us at every step away. You don't wait for us until we are at the deepest heart, the deep, deepest problems of our life. But you are there always for us in good times and not so good times and very, very not so good times. Then thank you, Lord, that you are there for us. Thank you, Lord, that you have good plans for us. Plans not to, not to harm us, but plans to give, give us a hope and a future. And we give thanks for this in Jesus' name. And all God's people say, Amen. Hallelujah.